This has been really nice for us to work together on this type project. Who are we kidding? This ain't been no cakewalk, folks. <laughs> She's had an idea of what she wanted to achieve artistically, and then I've had to figure out how it's going to work, how we're going to be able to manage this, how we're going to be able to build this, and it ain't been no walk in the park. Okay? No, no, it hadn't been easy. Um, he wanted to build me this nice uh, protege garden with these paths and walkways and rocks and the person I am just comes in here and says, no, I want a sitting area. I want this, I want this, I want this. I want it to look like this picture. And um, it has caused some issues. It has, but we got through it, but it took a lot of uh, a lot of work, counseling uh, to get through it. But we finally come together on some things. We both had to give on some Yeah, on we some compromised, issues. we compromised. But uh, I think in the end, uh, you was right on some things and I think I was right on some things. So we, I think it's gonna work out there in the end. I would have done it smaller than what it turned out. And I think the size that you picked out was probably the, the right size. So the right size. It's sending that, it's sending up turning that well. So I'm proud of it. Yeah, and don't you love the sitting area? Yeah, just absolutely. We can love just it. have such great mm -hmm. moments yeah, out and here. And these together. real comfortable cast iron <laughs> chairs here, I love them. I did get a cushion for them. Yeah, well, thank you. So we started almost exactly a year ago planting this garden, and you ordered the rocks in May for my Mother's Day present, and. The biggest problem we have, it took a lot of time to put it in, the biggest problem is that it's coming together on, on working through the issues of how the layout and design was going to work. It's the biggest, it took, sometimes it took weeks to decide a certain issue there. So, I'm a very visual person and I need to see it. And he thinks you should just do it. Um, and I understand he's going to have to take care of it. So You're not going to have to take care well, of I'm it. Well, I'm going to have to make sure it's took care of, yeah. So anyway. Um, and then the decision on the raised beds, because I decided having the stone around my raised beds was not feasible. I have uh, some hip issues and I couldn't get down there to actually take care of the beds. So I wanted a bed that was higher that I could sit and lean over into. So then we went on a search for the perfect raised bed. And, whew. Mm, we made it. That's the best way to put it. We've made it so far. Um, the ones I really wanted was so expensive, it was just not feasible. So we settled on these, what kind of metal is it? This is a metal they use for a bottom form when they pour in concrete, suspended concrete. This is the form metal they use for the bottom of that. It's very strong. Um, and it has boards on it. I really like it. it. turned out great. I've got the stone going on here. The next thing is I'm putting up a fence across the front, a water fountain feature, and there'll be some more beds in this area around some trees and that will be of the stone. So sit back, enjoy, and we'll take you on the process. And this was filming of about six months. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not. <laughs> it's only 12 minutes, but it's over a six month period of getting to where we are now. Well, after a good bit of back and forth, we finally settled in on a site where we was gonna put the garden shed. So it was time to get some wood and get started. We got Jared here that helps us inside on the shipping line, does some carpenter work. And then we recruited him to uh, get everything started and laid out. And he's getting started putting everything together. Now, if you remember the picture from the earlier video, this was my little dream sitting area. And folks, don't ever give somebody a picture to try to build something from. Here's my doors that Mr. Johnny painted for me that we found at a really good price. And we decided to go with the green as the same color of the house. So here we get started. So we're working off a picture here with no plans whatsoever. And you can see right here, we've already made our first mistake. And we start getting the doors put up there. And uh, everything's going pretty good. We've had to scratch our head a little bit here to this point, but we're getting all the doors cased in there. We've got Terry Hipness there. 
and uh, everything seems to be coming together at this point we realize we got a problem now we got to figure out how to get some pitch on the roof because it's flat top the way you see it so we have to go back to the drawing board and figure out how we're going to get some pitch and what pitch we want there so we have to lift the front up a little bit to accommodate that I'm getting ready to put the metal on top there got our beams on top got our hat rack on top it's time to put the metal on and it turned out gorgeous even without plans i am so in love with this area even have my solar chandelier now it's time to search for some chairs for this sitting area i found these iron cast iron chairs and Greg's trying them out, and he is not a fan of them. And now he's checking out the area for our next step. Well, it's time to plant our living wall or our hedge. It's going to separate the backside of the garden, the backdrop of the garden, I guess you'd say. You know, we looked at several different types of plants, and we settled in on these tea olives. And one reason is tea olives grow exceptionally well in our area. They don't have any diseases that I'm aware of. They really don't have any insect problems as well. And they, uh, it's evergreen. They got that good fragrance to them that comes from that white flower that blooms throughout the year. I've been a big fan of tea olives for a long time, and I thought this is the ideal plant to use for our hedge. Now you can see there, we got really good soil, so digging the holes wasn't a big problem there. Busting up our root ball. I believe these were seven gallon plants, so they're pretty good size. We want to uh, plant them the same level that they were. We want to dig a hole a little bit bigger than it needs to be to make sure that soil is nice and uh, loose. With the black soils that we have there, I didn't think it was important to add anything like peat moss or anything like that. So we just want to spin them around, get the side that we like best out front there. Now I planted these about four foot apart because I want these to grow together and create this hedge. And these tea olives should do that. So in just a few years, we should have a nice hedge here that's going to be the backdrop to our garden. And this turned out gorgeous too. I added some straw around them. And we actually went back and added a few more on the right side. And we've gotten to this far along with this project, and now we've decided that we need to take some trees out. We have too much shade, and we got a couple of trees that are close by that was kind of iffy on disease, being diseased up, and we was worried about. So we decided to take some trees out at this point. Now, mind you, we've already got our hedge in, and we've already got our garden shed started so it's not the ideal time to be taking trees out but we had a good group of guys that was able to come in and take these trees out and not damage anything so everything worked out well uh, we got mr johnny caulking up the doors and painting while the trees are being felled in the background there but everything worked out good there we got everything painted up and uh, sealed off ready for that paint job and didn't this turn out gorgeous? I love the colors. Now, Greg's not a fan of the beige, but it matches the trim on our house. He thinks it pops a little too much. <laughs> I think it pops just right. Now, we're getting in here after the trees have been took out. We're trying to clear up, hair it up, level up a little bit there. We got, they ground down some stumps, but we still got some of the roots and everything there that we're just pretty much going to have to deal with. We tried to work around them as much as we could, but we're wanting to, uh, you know, level it up, work this soil just a little bit because we're getting ready to go to the next stage. Yep, we're at this stage of the project here and we had to back up and regroup. She had one thing she wanted to accomplish and I had something else, so it's time to step back and make some different uh, decisions on how we're going to progress and we ended up on these raised beds right here so we were going with stone I decided that was not gonna work then we looked at wood it was way too expensive and this is what we decided on so I found these raised beds right here I was really 
I really wanted some well-made raised beds that was going to last for a long time. There was a lot of cheap ones out there on the market. So I shopped around, and I found a family up in Missouri, Hopkins Hidden Homestead, to make these raised beds right here. And these are the ones we settled on. We're going to put a link in the comments below their uh, their website where you can take a look if you want to. These things are very sturdy. Now, they're not the cheapest ones out there by no means. Very sturdy and easy to put together. And uh, we was proud we made the decision because we think they're going to be here after, we will, after we're gone. And talk about why you were digging a trench. Well, one thing I wanted to do was I want to make sure that they was all level. I don't want to raise beds when they're just kind of all over the place. To have the top of these all level makes them look so much better. Now, our land falls off pretty bad in this uh -oh. area here. He might have said an ugly word there. <laughs> yeah, we had we had our moments or two when we was installing these things. But we wanted to get them level so that they would look right at the top and uh, and, and not necessarily fall with the land. We was working with with land that was not level but we wanted to raise beds level and it took some time and some uh we measured we measured and we level some digging and we dug the first set seemed to go faster than the second set because it was more unlevel but um and we filled it with some topsoil that we had on hand yep um we think it's gonna be pretty sufficient yeah, there you are putting the corners in there. So yeah, you're supposed to put the corners in before you put the soil in. We got a little ahead of ourselves on this one. And we tried to, as we built each one, now this front one has three joined together, and then there's three behind it. But we tried to, uh, at this point here, you had had it. <laughs> this was going on day three. This was later in the afternoon right here. And this is when I realized I was in my late 50s. And that pickaxe there has worked on me all afternoon. But we, we pretty much got through with this part of it that afternoon there. Yeah, we we worked through it. And yeah. like I say again, we measured. We measured and we'd move them and measure, measure until we got them like we wanted them. Yeah, I was in charge of the measuring tape. I mean, the leveler. And here's the last one. And you can see how unlevel it is. And we really had to dig down, or you had to dig down yeah. on this one, not me. Um, I was going behind him. Yeah, we finally get them set here. We uh, get them like we want them. It's time to put some soil in there to hold them in place to the next step. Yeah, it was just constant. And they're not that heavy, but they're, they're really made well. I'm really pleased with them. Here, I did put the things in before you put the soil in at the end. Yeah, what this does is help keep the soil from running out the ends there. And if everything's lined up, they will just slide right in. And here you bumped it a little bit when you put that in there. Yeah, but I went, yeah, yeah. I went back and measured. Everything was okay. So then, I, it's been one year since I got these stone for Mother's Day. It was time to lay some stone. So it's been a year, and we're finally going to get some of these stone laid around the uh, edge of my wildflowers. And so I'm just creating and defining a line with the stone. I did not put any gra pea gravel underneath it because I was only going too high. And it's not... The stones are not level. I decided just to follow the grade. So I dug down about two inches and I would sort through the stone and find the larger ones to put on the bottom because you want the front edge to be like a line. Oops, there, <laughs> and that almost hit my foot. And I carried a lot of these by hand. And then by the second day, I decided I've got to get me a buggy. So after I've sorted through them, I'm just creating a little curve here, and it was really enjoyable. It was a lot of work. I was really sore, but it took me about two and a half days of bending and toting, and and it turned out pretty well, didn't it? You know, it? I have to say, you did a wonderful job on these rocks. I'd come out there and check on you every now and then, but this was all Mama Hoss right here. She laid every one of them, and she did a great job with it. We got Johnny's painting the board. So with this kit of raised beds, you can do it two different ways. You can leave them like they were, or you can add the wood kit on top. And we decided we wanted to do the wood kit on top. 
So we used pressure treated wood for the wood. We painted it. We got John and Jared here that's laying them out there. And you screw these things on the top. And what this is going to do is kind of dress them off. Also, it's going to give Mama Hall somewhere to sit if she wants to sit on the edge of bed and work these raised beds here. So I'm really glad we did that. And you know, the black worked out well, I think. It did. We Our house is trimmed in black, so we've got all the colors of the house out here in the garden. Yeah, with the wood kit, you have these little things that go on top that the where your joints of your wood come together that you plate over and screw these things down. I like that because it hides any imperfections. Plus, it's going to help keep that wood protected over a period of time there. And we're putting these screws in there to keep everything in, in its place. Well, now that we've got the beds in, the next step is to put in our drip irrigation. Yep. And also, I'm on the hunt for a water fountain to put in the second section between the beds and my sitting area. And then I've got some trees to plant. We're going to have a grapevine, some blueberry bushes, but we will keep you in tune. This is just a, like a panoramic view of the house where you can see our colors there all match up. Yep, it's all starting to come together a little bit now. So stay tuned for part four coming soon. We hope it won't take six more months. <laughs> I hope not.